So have you ever made a pros and cons list when you're trying to make a decision? Have you ever thought out all the possible consequences of a decision that you're trying to make to try to figure out what all the good and bad outcomes are? Because if you have, then I think you are already using the Neville Goddard imaginal scene technique in your daily life. Thought about this a lot today. Um, I thought a lot about how I make decisions and I realized that I am almost always using the imaginal scene to weigh options just on a day-to-day -day basis. So here's where this gets interesting for me. Now, we have this illusion, we have an illusion of control. Everybody kind of knows that anything can happen at any time. You know, you can make the most solid ironclad plans and something random will happen to screw them up. There's no real control over anything. So when you have a decision to make and you weigh all the options to try to figure out what to do, you decide on something and then that thing comes to pass, let's say. You make a decision, it turns out to be the right decision. The consequences that you thought were gonna happen, happen, you know, basically it turned out the way you thought it would. This strengthens the illusion that we are operating independently of divine intelligence. <laughs> trying to keep myself on track here. I've been thinking about this all day. So I was thinking earlier, you know, how I've been approaching this conscious creation concept in a much more intentional way for the last few months. In the past, it's, I've known that I was using it, but it was almost to the point like, you know, when you're like, oh, I should really go to the gym. I haven't been to the gym in three months, like that kind of thing. That's how I was about visualizing. Like I knew I could be more effective at it, but I was just sort of in the flow of like creating my business and stuff. And I figured I could fine tune it if I practiced a little more or something, but I just didn't want to because I was too like into my life, you know. But now that I've been sort of intentionally trying to imagine a scene that I want to play out and thinking a lot more about this and reading it, you know, kind of being obsessed with this whole, this whole process and trying to sort of bring it more into the awareness. I've realized how much I was using this already. Um, and I think that the only difference to me was that I thought I was actually making decisions when really I was essentially using imaginal scenes and then I was still subject to, you know, I was still essentially under the control of divine intelligence the whole time. But it just appeared to me that I had made the right decision, that I was in control, all of that on the mundane worldly level, like little meat suit me was like making decisions and, you know, they were panning out. Because every time I've had a big decision to make over the last few years, especially when it involved a large investment of money or sort of a shift in the approach to running the business or something like that, what I've always done, at least as long as I can remember, is sort of try the decision on. I would think if I if I go this route, what's this gonna look like in a year? You know, how will things have changed? What are possible negative things that could have happened? You know, are they outweighed by how much better everything is gonna be? And I would go into that scene in a very real way. And you, if you think about it, you probably do this too, but I would go into the scene and it was very real because I was imagining what 
was probably going to be reality. So it was very easy to imagine. This wasn't like some fantasy I was having. I was thinking, how will this actually be in one year? Very easy to imagine that for me. And, you know, I would try it on. And if I thought, ooh, that might that might kind of suck actually that aspect of this screw it uh you know then that decision would be scrapped and not created but and here's where I this is where this gets interesting for me whenever I would try on a scene and it felt really good and I'm you know looking around my reality in a year and going okay well that could be a problem but I really think that we can cross that bridge when we come to it here's the here's a couple really huge benefits oh my gosh, I'm working less. I can see that I'm not going to have to come in as much, you know. And in, a, in the scene, as I'm imagining this, it would kind of become really clear that this was the right thing to do and that this is the outcome that I want to have happen. Um, and in this imaginal scene built in was 100% belief because I in my mind, had had control over making that happen by making whatever decision I was thinking about making. But like I was just saying, you you make you make the you know you, you have the best intentions for your plans playing out the way you want to and they often don't. So it doesn't really explain how all of these decisions that I made panned out unless you attribute it to the proper imagining of the end scene and the taking on the state, which I think when I was in those scenes and they felt really good, I just kind of instantly adopted the state because I was like, we're gonna do this. I'm making this decision. This is how it's gonna play out. And I would almost sort of start living there. Like there have been times where I kind of started getting senioritis about work and I would come in as much, you know, because I'm already sort of living in the end. And I realized that I did this for almost every big decision that we made. So for me, at least, that really gives me a little more faith because while it seemed that I had direct influence on those decisions panning out and it can be hard if you're trying to create something sort of from scratch if you don't really know how to get from point a to point b point b being the thing you want and point a being where you are right now without it you know if you if you can't really see your way from point a to point b especially if you don't even know if you can't even do anything there's like nothing you can do then it can, you know it can be kind of really hard to buy it but the thing is that you needing to be able to see a way there is unnecessary. And in my decision-making process where it appeared that I had control over it, that was an illusion. In both cases, the trip from point A to point B was planned by divine intelligence. There was definitely intervention in there. Um, if you watch the last video I put up, there's the best example of some random set of events happening to give me something that there was no way that I could figure out to get. It's really impressing the subconscious with the end state, being 100% sure that the process will happen and then allowing it to happen. And I think this is a skill that you have to practice. It will help a lot if you can relate to what I just said about the decision-making thing. If you make a pros and cons list for things, if you're a person who carefully weighs out options, you're already kind of doing this with day-to-day -day options that you believe you have control over. I did not smoke anything before making this video. I hope that this helped somebody. I hope it made sense. Um, this has been on my mind for days and I needed to get it out there.